we're talking about creative arm work and fashion. Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Jennifer Gianni, and today we're talking about creative arm work and fascial fitness. We're gonna look at some hand warm-ups for the wall jumping exercises. We've looked at the wall jumping exercises a little bit, and if you're interested in learning more about this choreography, you can check out my hand mechanics workshop that um, has just been released. So check that out on our site. So one of the, the first things that I love to do on the wall before I do any type of um, reformer arm work or free weight arm work is to warm up the fingers and the hands on the wall. So you want to spread your fingers as much as you can and really um, draw yourself into your finger pads like you're a reptile. And from here, you're going to allow the heel of the hand to come down and then pick up the reptile fingers and hands. So just doing this a few times, just rocking back and forth, picking up that sensation of your suction cup hands. And then going into pressing the fingernails and then the finger pads. So fingernails, finger pads. This is really nice for waking up the whole hand and of course through the forearm and the arm bone. And then from here, you can start to peel away and just reach through your middle finger. So you'll do a little bend in the elbow, keeping everything engaged and reaching through that middle finger, right? And at first, you could come to the very point and just hold, right? But then eventually, you can have your client peel all the way away. And the thing is that when they come into the wall, you want them to keep reaching into the wall to keep that space between the shoulder blades open. And then from here, you can go into any kind of combination with the wall jumping. Side bending, allowing the spine to follow along. You could go into your diagonals here with the hands. Again, trying to keep the spine and the pelvis the same as you go forward and back. And I'm really, where I'm hinging from is, is trying not to be from my rib cage, but from my ankles, keeping my, the whole sole of the foot onto the floor. And that is excellent way to warm up the arms and the hands. So from here, we're gonna go into um, some free weight work with very, very light poundage and look at some swinging exercises. So I have one pound weights here. And with this, I'm just holding on to them very lightly between my fingers. So I'm feeling the heaviness of the weights in my arms and my hands. And this is excellent for flossing the fascia and it's also gonna actually give you a little bit of a cardio workout, um, and it's gonna make some pretty good looking arms. So this is a great sequence to do. So from here, first I'm just gonna swing the arms back and up, and then have just a little catch of my arm at the top. And what I'm trying to do is keeping the stability around my pelvis and spine as much as I can, especially when my arms are moving back. I'm trying not to do a big shove forward with my rib cage. And at the top here, I want to feel that kind of effortless holding, right, where I don't feel any tension in my arms. And this is speaking to that whole flossing of my fascia and my elastic recoil. So everything feels really effortless. You can also go into um, one arm swinging forward and the other arm swinging back. And on the first sequence of this, you can just keep your eyes forward, keep some buoyancy in your ankles, your knees, and at your femur head. Pelvis is heavy. 
And then once you get comfortable, right, you start to bring the carousel pull of your spine into it, moving from the sacrum all the way through the crown of the head. And then you can also do a little pause, pause. So you have that release and catch, release and catch. And again, you want that feeling of effortlessness here in the movement. Now, you can also add some movement once you get more advanced in this and you're comfortable with the weights and you really feel effortless through your arms, is adding some more spinal movement into it. So simply with this one that we did first with the arms going up and down, right? you can start to add a flexion of the spine when the arms come down and then you recoil back into extension. So moving down and up. And this is an excellent one because what we're really teaching our spine to do, we're stretching that, that lateral um, thoracolumbar tissue. So when we're flexing, it's pulling lateral. And then we're training it to have that automatic, effortless recoil back into extension. So that one is a really nice one. But you want to save that one for later until your client gets really comfortable with handling the weights and feeling that effortlessness in the arms and hands. Hello. Heather wrote in on the forum. She said, I have a question about women with wide pelvises. They tend to be overweight, hypermobile, valgus knees, and pronated feet when standing. But when I put them on the reformer, their strategy is to supinate their feet. Any ideas on how to work with us? I think that what Heather is seeing when her clients get on the reformer and they supinate is just a compensation when they try to line their legs and knees up into parallel because of the, the stiffness in their foot, in their ankle, and in their lower leg, they're kind of going to that opposite extreme. So this is telling us, and we see this a lot, that there's so much gripping in the foot, in the lower leg, because of the habitual um, placement of the foot and the habitual way that these clients are walking on their foot, that we have some really duck areas in the foot and lower leg. And there's so much gripping going on in the foot and lower leg that it's really hard for these clients to fire musculature in an optimal way that's above the knee, like the, the outer leg and the, the glutes. So I think the first recipe for these clients would to be to do some specific release work on the feet and the lower legs. We have tons and tons of videos um, showing this, but Casey's practical release workshop would be um, uh, just necessary, especially if you're dealing with these types of clients and you're seeing that you're not really able when they get on the reformer and they're doing their footwork, they're really not able to find an optimal placement and an, an easy um, glide and transitioning from plantar flexion into dorsiflexion. So some targeted release work I would say is number one so that that can release and then we can really start to cue more into the the glutes and the, the upper leg muscles. Um, after that I would put them in some really functional uh, standing positions. For example the one-legged standing with the yoga block at the wall. That is, that's going to be more advanced and you want to wait until you lay the groundwork down for these clients on alignment. But that one-legged yoga block with the wall to support them is going to be something really, really important to help to teach them the right placement of the foot along with the uh, right alignment of the leg. And that, when they get it right, they're really going to start to feel um, this outer glute working as well as the whole lateral leg. And that's going to be a huge thing for them. Um, so I think I would work 
that way at first, release the foot, the lower leg, start to build some wear awareness in functional positions like standing, and then doing some really good detailed footwork on the reformer, really making sure that the client is finding that optimal glide, especially through the talus without losing the balls of their feet. That's it for today. If you have an observation or a question that you'd like to see answered in an upcoming episode, comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or the forum on our site. See you next time and never stop learning.